once you've done some research about what types of roles are out there and maybe started to get a shortlist of the charities that you'd like to apply for, it's really worth doing a bit of due diligence. This is basically just finding out more about the charity um, so that you're prepared for what you're going into and can check that it's going to be the good, a good match for you. Things that you want to understand are what does the charity do and how is it run? Uh, what are its key priorities and challenges? Are there any kind of things that make you a bit worried about the organisation, how it operates? Um, when and where are meetings held? Whether the role will deliver what you're hoping to get out, out of it, including whether the charity is able and willing to offer the sort of support that you need if this is your first trustee role, which is something that you should be um, feel comfortable asking about and that the charity should be willing to offer. You can do lots of research on the charity's website and its social media and if it's put an advert out there for trustees this will also contain a lot of information. But the register of charities on the Charity Commission's website is a brilliant source of information. One of the documents that it's really worth looking at is called the Trustees Annual Report and that goes along with the charity's accounts. It will tell you things about the charity's future plans, what it's achieved, who else are its trustees um, and some of the different services and activities that it's involved in, as well as how much income it has and what it spends each year and how. Um, if you want to find out if a charity is incorporated, uh, which carries lower risk of personal liability, then if you search the register of companies, if it comes back with a search, it will either be a company or a charitable incorporated organisation. Um, you can also find out a lot about a charity from its social media, from newsletters or other publications that it puts out there um, and from uh, maybe going and volunteering with them as well um, or arranging a visit or talking to someone else that's been involved in the charity. When you're looking at applications I would say expect to apply to a few charities you know chances are you won't necessarily get the first application the first role that you apply for that's not a bad thing. The key thing with applications is to let your enthusiasm shine through and we can help you craft a cracking application. Our guide is full of loads of hints and tips and here is just a bit of an insight into those. Um, what we always say is be realistic about what you can, what you have to offer and also the type of charity to apply for. Um, you're not going to become the trustee of the British Red Cross on your first day. Be honest with yourself about the time that you can commit, but also about what you have to offer. Um, that's finding that balance between not underestimating your abilities, but also not over-egging your expertise. And be inspired by what a, a charity does. If it doesn't motivate you, if it doesn't make you excited, are you really going to want to put in the hard graft that might be needed sometimes? And um, before you even put in a formal application, you might be able to have a chat with the charity to find out a bit more about what it does um, and what the, the role entails and what support you might be able to get uh, from the charity. So induction training and also ongoing learning. Uh, also as well, make sure you keep a copy of your application and keep a track of where each one has got to in, this, in the process. Um, many charities will ask you to provide a CV and a cover letter as the way of applying for a trustee role. Our top tips, keep it plain English, uh, ha show how you match the skills or other experience that the charity is looking for, avoid acronyms and industry jargon from your profession. No one wants to have to Google to find out what you actually do on a daily basis. Your CV as well can be more personal for a trustee role than it would be if you were applying for a job. Um, you might have relevant volunteering experience, hobbies or lived experience that is really critical to why you would make a good trustee of this organisation. A cover letter should complement your CV so don't just duplicate what's in there and make it personal. This is your chance to say to the charity this is why I care about what you do and this is why I would be a brilliant match for you as a trustee. Don't just make it sound like you're trying to get a work promotion, it really, really puts charities off. If they've mentioned that there are specific attributes that they're looking for, for example, they might be really, really keen to get people of colour or people with disabilities or other underrepresented groups from charity boards uh, as on their board. Um, if you're comfortable with talking about your lived experience or other qualities and attributes that you have that they've specified, then do include this because this might help to nudge your application further forward. You might get called for an interview as well. This might be something quite formal with a panel or it might be an informal chat. Things that you might want to ask the charity. Remember, this is a chance for you to find out more about the charity as well as the other way around. We've got some questions in our guide that you might want to ask. For example, what makes you excited about your work? How did you get involved in the organisation? 
How do you see the charity's work evolving in the next few years? Some of the questions that the charity might ask you as well are, why are you interested in our particular charity? If you've not been a trustee before, why now? Um, and can you tell me about a situation where you've had to make a difficult decision and how you maybe went about that? Be honest about what you have to offer. Share what you're comfortable with, for example, about your lived experience. You don't have to say more than you feel at ease with. You might also choose to share something in an interview that you wouldn't want the charity to make common knowledge afterwards and feel free to say that to them. The interview process might take some time. It might not just be one chat, there might be a several a series of conversations that you have. Um, if you are going to be uh, appointed as a trustee there will be a formal appointment process so it might be decided at a meeting of the other trustees or at the charity's annual general meeting with its members. So just be patient. If you're not sure how the process is going just ask. If you're not successful in the role don't let that put you off. Ask for some feedback Chances are they just had a candidate that had slightly more experience or skills that they were looking for. Reflect on what you might do differently in a future application and then get back out there. There's loads more tips for and examples of different CVs and cover letters that other people have used, uh, both on Getting On Board's website and signposted in How To Become A Charity Trustee, A Practical Guide. <music>